Let's talk about Delta Connected Transformers. Delta Connected Transformers have three transformer windings connected end-to-end -end with each other. Line conductors are connected to each point where the two windings connect. Let, let's see if we can uh, take a look at the graphic here. Now, Delta, it's called Delta simply because the way it's going to be displayed here, shown, it follows the Greek symbol, which is a Delta symbol. And I'm sure, Eric, you know what Delta means. Anybody know what Delta means, the actual word? Or? Well, it's used as, as difference, but I don't... Okay, so it doesn't there. Right. All right, so take a look at this one winding. This is the primary winding, and let's just say that it's connected 480 volts. So right here, if you take line one from utility, and if you go line two for the utility, that one physical transformer, we'll, we'll make a graphic showing three different physical transformers in the actual wiring configuration. That one transformer has line one connected to it and line two connected to it, but there's three physical transformers sitting on a pole. What they did first was take this one transformer, see there's two wires on the transformer, one wire connects to the other wire of a transformer, connects to the other wire of the transformer, and then the other end. So they're all connected end on end to each other. Then you bring line one to this one spot here, line two to this point here, and line three. So we would call this H1, okay? We'd mark it H1, H2, H3. You follow me? Now watch the voltage. From line one to line two is 480, and take a look at the phase voltage right here. That voltage is 480. From line two to line three, that's 480. This voltage right here is what? It's 480. From line one to line three, it's 480. So each winding has 480 volts. Now, for this example, we've chosen to take the secondary winding and connect phase A to C, connect C to B, and B to A. So we've chose, see you have three different transformers with four wires. Two is a primary and two is a secondary. And all we do is you take the three transformers, you just put them like, think about it, it's kind of perfect. Three tubs, right? If you put three tubs together, what does it look like? It looks like a delta, just the physical tubs, because the way two and one, you know, like you were going to do a bowling pins right there, you have the three. So now you do what? You go from one to one, one to one, one to one. That is connected in delta. Then you have the primary, and you do the same thing to the primary. Primary, secondary, connected, in this case here, delta, delta. And let's follow what that means. If I'm saying I want to have 240 volts secondary, well, if I, that means that this winding right here is 240 volts, this winding here is 240 volts, and this winding right here is also 240 volts. If you look at the phase ro uh, ratio, the primary winding is 480, and the secondary winding is what? 240. So if you're looking for voltage ratio, this is a two-to-one voltage ratio transformer. Ratios are identified through the phase themselves, not the line. Now, so phase to phase is 480 from line one to line two. 480 volts, line one to line two, 480. Line one to line three. Well, this transfer here is, is 240, but they take in one center spot and they went ahead and they ran a wire off the center spot. If this transformer is 240 volts, and you make a connection in the center, well, obviously, half of 240 volts is 120. And the other half of 240 volts is 120. So making a connection at this point right here, this is going to be your XO terminal. Now, I'm sure some of you guys have heard this. You create a neutral, what's that word that people say? You generate a new neutral, you, you derive a neutral. Take a look at this, that drives me nuts. You're not deriving anything. Take a look at this. You're simply having a winding that's 240 volts and they made a spot in the middle to make a connection and it just happens to be 120 between the two points. And from the other phase, or from the line conductor, it's 120. Now, that's Let's say it's line one to line two is 240, line one to two, and that would be X1, and we get X2, X3 in here, and XO. Uh, line one to two, that's 240, and line two to three is 240. This is a delta, delta transformer. Now let's talk, yes, Steve? I was just going to say, Mike, you mentioned that the voltages are two to one, but that also is consistent with the windings. There's twice as many windings on the primary as there are on the secondary in each of those windings. 
and by uh, taking that center point, you're taking half the windings of that one face-to-face uh, -face connection to get half the voltage. Great point. We're having twice as many windings here as we have over here, and so that magnetic coupling creates the half the voltage. Now, let's talk about, well, why would you have, uh, by the way, um, I'm not going to say why we do this yet, but I don't want to leave it. I'm going to go, actually, let me do it right now. Why would you have a delta, delta transformer configuration with this center phase split and grounded? Anybody know why they go delta, delta? The reason being is this. What is the voltage between the line conductors? 240. 240. Now, if we don't go delta, delta, and we go delta Y, the voltage between the line conductors is going to be 208. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. So the advantage is, and I'm not going to go too far yet, the advantage of a delta, delta system is the <coughs> secondary voltage is higher. That means that what happens to the current flow of the conductors themselves? The current flow is going to be what? Higher voltage, current is what? Lower. So you can have smaller conductors. Now, also, not an advantage, but a delta, delta will be able to give you line to neutral load. So you can get some 120 volt loads out of a delta, delta system like this. However, this transformer is designed primarily for industrial applications in warehouses where most of your loads are going to be single phase 240 volts or they're going to be three phase 240 volts and you have very, very, very little 120 volt loads. And by going to a delta delta system like this, you're able to raise up the voltage and drop down the size of your service. That's one of the advantages to a delta delta configuration. Let's go a little further. Now, this is another way to look at what we just discussed here, and you'll see this sometimes marked on the equipment itself. So let's take a look at this. Here is phase A, 480 volts, phase B, and then here is phase C on the primary, and the secondary is 240. Steve, you said the turns ratio is 2 to 1, which is the number of windings to get that voltage ratio here. And H1, so watch this. See, this goes here. It goes to here, it goes to here. They're all connected in series, aren't they? They're all connected together there. That's going to be a delta configuration. And then where they join together is going to be two transformer windings connected here, line one. This one and this one is line two. This one, this one is line three. That's delta. And then on the secondary side, we have these two connected. They're all connected in series. Right here is half of one transformer winding because it's 240 volts, is going to be the 120 volt loads. And that's another way of looking at it. Here's another third way of looking at it. Here is H1. They're all connected together to line one. And then line two connects these two transformers. Line three connects these. Here's the primary. Here's the secondary. HXs are tied together here. And X1s, X3s are tied together here and then X2s and line 2. So you take line 1 to X1, line 2 to X2, line 3 to X3. Now, a question that might come up is like, okay, well, A, B, C, or line 1, line 2, line 3 on the primary, and line 1, line 2, line 3 on the secondary, or H1, H2, H3 on the primary, X1, X2 on the secondary, does that mean that there's a phase rotation A, B, C? Phase rotation has nothing to do with this at all. This has to do with what's the rotation supplied by the utility, and that rotation, if you maintain it properly, will give you the, whatever the rotation you're looking to follow. Now, Eric, do you guys get involved in, in your large industrial facilities? Is, do you guys start with a phase rotation? Is it identified? Is it clear that we know that A, B, and C is a phase rotation? Or is this just whatever happens, it happens, and when you hook up a piece of three-phase load, you do a phase rotation of that, and then you make sure you connect the lead so that it rotates in the direction that you want. How does that work? It depends on who. That's our intention. Our intention is that we'd like to have a ro constant rotation throughout, but it depends on the electrical inspector and the construction manager as to how uh, meticulous they are <clears throat> because you hook it up, and it's just connected. Now, if you don't <laughs> catch it, you don't put a phase rotation meter on it, too late. You're not going to change it around. And so... And, and the other thing about that that's real important to understand is that even if you have a standard today that says that everything's clockwise throughout, you still have an installed base of stuff that is, rotation varies all over the place. So You're saying 
if you had phase rotation A, B, C coming in from the utility, and then you bring in three phase conductors and a neutral and equipment grounding conductor, and you're connected there and you're connected there, we don't know how you connected there and how you connected there and what the rotation is going to be there. Unless you, unless you had what? Black, red, blue wire, brown, orange, yellow wire, right? Physical wire. And that way it's a lot easier to maintain what? The color coding throughout, maintain whatever that rotation is going to be throughout. If you're just pulling a bunch of black wire using some phase tape at the end, well, then obviously we're going to lose rotation. Well, and yes? you don't know about it anyway, and what a lot of people do is they, they're at the very end at the motor, okay? They have an uncoupled motor, they bump it for rotation, they see it's going the wrong direction, so they switch two leads. And so the rotation is always correct at the motor, but what about upstream at the MCC? You know, is it clockwise or anti-clockwise at that MCC? And then when you go upstream from that through another level of transformer <coughs> at the switch gear, is it clockwise or anti-clockwise there? Okay. So, All right. What well, we want to just to be aware of, when it comes to rotation, it has nothing to do with transformers, okay? That there's no connection there at all. That's just simply to do with how you've maintained your rotation coming up to that point. All right. Let's talk about primary and secondary line voltage. This is pretty straightforward stuff. The voltage measured in the primary conductor is called the primary line voltage. The voltage measured in the secondary is referred to as the secondary line voltage. So if this is a 480 volt system on the primary, and it's 480 volts line to line. And on the secondary, it's going to be 240 volts line to line. And if I went from line 1 to neutral, so line to neutral is 120. If we were going to show a voltmeter, if we had room, we could put a voltmeter. If not, that's fine. So, and also, we'll talk about the high leg here in a second. But let's take a look here. Line 1 to neutral is 120. Line 3 to neutral is 120. Line 1 to line 3 is 240. And then line 2 to line 3 is 240. Because watch, that should be shown here as 480, 480, 480, 120, 120, 120, and so 240, 120, 120, and 240. That would be a little easier then to see how those values work out. Now, Interestingly, here's a high leg. It's called a high leg. See, a delta-delta configured transformer is called a delta high leg. And the reason they call it a high leg is because one of these conductors right here, if you take a look at this voltage measurement, you go line two and you go to the neutral. We'll talk more about this in a second. That is actually going to be measured as a 208 volt high leg voltage. Let's talk about this high leg conductor. The term high leg, wild leg, stinger, red leg, and there are other terms that are being used in the industry, are used to identify the conductor that has a secondary line voltage of 208 volts to ground. Now, in reality, it, even though it's voltage to ground, it really is the voltage to the neutral terminal of the secondary side of that system. It's not really earth. It's the actual neutral terminal. I remember when I was working, um, when I first was in a trade, I remember hearing about these delta high leg systems in the and the, the wild leg or the stinger. They used the word stinger a lot. Well, that's stinger. And they told me, when, at, at my time, they told me the voltage was 192 volts. I'm like, oh, okay. And then as I started going along and I started learning, and eventually I started learning transformers, I started finding out the voltage is 208. But we ne let's remember this 192 or 198 volts to 208. Let's see how that voltage gets calculated. And we're going to talk more about that in just a little bit, but let's just go on right now. Let's take a look at this graphic. The voltage, what I'd want to show here, would be, see, see, this is 208 volts. And uh, Eric, I might be totally wrong about this, and maybe you can do some math and, and prove me right or wrong. And I don't care which, I just want to make sure I'm right here. If this winding is shown as 240 volts, right? And if this winding is shown as 120 volts, right. and if we know the angle, what is this thing called? It's a 30-60-90 right triangle. But this is called something. This, this is called a cosine tangent. Uh, not that way. Doesn't not work sure there. where you're going with that, but okay. it's a 30-60-90 right triangle. Okay. Whatever this is, if I right. know what this angle is here, right. if I took a That's piece of graph degrees. paper, if I took a graph paper, and I draw this and I go this direction of let's say 24 inches and I go 24 inches this way exactly. and I go 24 inches this way right. and I go 12 inches this way and then I take a, a, a ruler just a scale ruler right. and I go this way will I measure 20.8 inches? Absolutely positively. Okay I, that's what I thought and so so I wanted you to understand 
how this voltage, if you're measuring from this neutral point to this point over here, you're measuring between this winding coupled together with this winding, but because this winding is 240 and this winding is 120, and so it's not, what, what do you call that? I guess it, 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 it's hy the hypotenuse. Is this a hypotenuse? The, the, uh, the 240 is actually the hypotenuse, and so the 120 is the short leg, the 208 is the long leg. And so if you can simply apply Pythagorean's theorem here as well. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have any clue what he's talking about. What theorem is that? Pythagorean's theorem. You know, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, that one I know. Yeah. Okay, that's, oh, that one I know. So then this would be what? Is this A squared? That's C squared. And so the 120 squared plus 208 squared would be equal to 240 squared. What about if I knew this and this? How would I get this? 240 squared minus uh, the 120 squared. Is there a square root after that? Yeah, well, just write it down on paper and do whatever. Okay. All right. Let's do it this way. Just trust me. If you have 120 here and you have 240 here, then you're going to get 208. All right, Eric, a challenge for you. I need you to do this calculation for me. Is what about if this was not 240 volts and this was not 120 volts, but this was... 230 volts, and this was 115. So in the 70s, we didn't have a 120, 240 volt system. We had a 115 slash 230 volt system. Right. Then in that particular case, my high leg would not have been 208 volts. It would have been what? 199. 199. 199. And 110, if, and back a long time ago, maybe in the 50s, we used to actually have a 110 volt system. We don't right. anymore. 110, 220. 110. Right? Do me and a favor. so 110 times square root of 3 is 192, and that's where that comes from. Ah, so the 192 came from the 50s, right? The old time electricians working on a 110, 220 volt system. And then we start getting to the 60s, and then we're starting to get into a 115, 230. And then, of course, not very long after that, we start getting into 12240. Now, this also kind of works its way back a little bit that we're running on voltages today of what? On the primary, 14.4. Do you guys remember what the voltages were before that? Before 14.4, utility primary voltage. Well, 12,470. No, no. Before that was 13.8. Yeah, but if you keep going oh, back. Hey, one second, one second. <laughs> <laughs> what was before 13.8? 13.6? No, 13.2. 13.2, well. And what was before 13.2? 12.4.70. And let me give you, if you want to do the math on that, 12.4.70 going to, thir let's see, it would be 12.4, 13.2, 12 that is 5% more. 13.2, 5% more is 13.8. 13.8, 5% more is 14.4. The history of utilities is that they started with a voltage, and then they started having such a great load, and utility transformers and transformers have a tap to it. They'll allow you to tap up to, and they would <coughs> then start tapping up to 5% to, to peak. That then became the standard. Then they came up with new transformers, and they kept raising the standard 5%. So you had a 110-220, then you had a 115-230, and then you had a 120-240. So that's why the high leg or the stinger value went from 192 to 198. Now we're up to 208. So that's the history of what those numbers mean. But this is what's important, is if you go from, let's take a look at this graphic here. The voltage from line 2 to that neutral is 208 volts. Now this application usually is used in industrial applications where you have line to line 240 volt loads and a little bit of 120 volt loads. But guess what you have to do with the panel? You have to make sure that every B phase is not connected to a 120 volt load, right? Because the B phase connected to a 120 volt load would be operating at 208 volts. And I remember one time going to a, a public works at a, at, at a city, and I was doing something in the warehouse in the public works building, and I noticed, you know, when you go to a panel, you never have enough breaker openings, right? And I noticed, Look at this. <laughs> Look at the, all the extra spaces in the panel. That is so cool. And not only that, but that's kind of strange. Why would they have those spaces? I mean, I would have thought they were all on the bottom, but okay, no big deal. I drop a breaker in there, hook it all up. I hook up something at 120 volts, toasted it immediately. That my first experience 
with a high leg delta system is I didn't know what I should have done was number one, it needs to be identified, right? We need to have some kind of identification, know it's high leg. And then you got to realize you cannot connect line to neutral load. See, a single pole breaker, if you look at the breaker, it's rated 120 or 120 slash 240, which means the maximum voltage line to neutral is 120. So you couldn't even put a single pole breaker on that phase in the first place. And of course, it's 208 volts to ground in today's application. And then we'd have a problem. So let's take a look at this graphic here. So it's this B phase here. And maybe we'll get a graphic one day showing some empty spaces in there. <laughs> OK, Mike's making a note he's going to do that. It's this B phase. Now, see, it's OK if you're going to go line to line loads, because the voltage line to line is what? 240. So line to line, if we show a voltmeter here, that would be OK. The problem is that the B phase to the neutral terminal is 208. Um, I do know of a case of a guy doing this. Now, let me see if I have a picture. Here, let's go to the next slide here. An important point. So if you have a high leg system, the high leg is required to go onto the B phase of a panel board, switchboard, switch gear, or motor control center. Okay? So Required to go on the B phase, maybe not motor control center, just panel board, switch boards, and switch gear. Supposed to go on the B phase. But years and years ago, the requirement was that the phase high leg went on the C phase. Now, watch what happened. If for like maybe 80 years in the industry, high leg delta systems were placed on the C phase, and then it was in the 70s, they said, no, we want to move the high leg to the B phase. So there are installations out there today that was installed, let's say, prior to the 70s, where the high leg is on the C phase. What's your point, Mike? Okay, my point is this. You go and you do a service change. You pull the high leg off, no big deal. You put the, put the gear back on again, it's a high leg system. Where would you put the high leg if you were going to put it in there? You're going to put it where? You're going to put it now, a new code is going to require you to put it what? on the B phase. The problem is what? All the wiring in that building had which phase connected to the high leg? C. Mm. Had a friend of mine give me a call one day, like at 7 o'clock in the morning. He was going nuts. He couldn't figure out what happened. He did a service change to a building overnight. When they got there in the morning, they started turning on the power. They kept wiping out equipment. As people entered, they kept wiping everything out. He did not realize that the high leg was on the C phase of that equipment when they took it down. He didn't identify which is the high leg, so that when he reconnected, he connected it so the high leg was on B phase, wiped everything out. To make it even worse, take a look at this graphic here. The utilities require the high leg to be on the C phase. Now, Mike, do you know, anybody remember what, is not have to do with metering? Yeah, they, which, strap, they strap the B-phase straight through on the metering. Oh, the B-phase is, is... Strapped straight through. What does that mean? There's no... There's no, uh, there's no metering on, on the B-leg. All right, they so this, show, right this should show right here, solid, without, without a stab on there. Uh, is that what you're saying? The, well, the B-phase. The, the middle one's strapped right through, not the C-phase. That's why they put it on the C-phase. But the C-phase is the high leg. Right, but they strap, that, they strap the B-phase through on the delta metering. So it depends on the utility now. Okay, so you're saying this might be solid. Right. I wonder on why the metering. Because they only use two phases? <clears throat> no. Yeah. They, they only meter on two phases. Okay. All right. So the meters are designed that we need to... Well, I wonder why they want the high leg on the outside then. Steve? And some of the new meters, I'm hearing, that's not an issue anymore. That's right. The new smart meters, it doesn't care about the wild leg. It's still going to work. It's going to go. Okay, so it's just the way the meters were designed, and we got to realize, when the high leg was on the C phase, the meters were on the C phase, is that right? So they designed the meters that way. When the code changed the high leg to go from the C phase to the B phase, the utility guys are like, wait, wait now, we're not changing our standard because you guys changed your standard. So be aware of the utility requirements, that the high leg probably is going to be on the C phase, even though we might have smart meters, won't matter. The practices that utilities want to maintain, the practices that they've been practicing. I'm sure that makes sense if you think about that long enough. Okay, so... High leg goes in the B phase. High leg is required to be identified. 4083F1 requires us to put some kind of marking at the switchboard, switchgear, and panel boards to identify that this has B phase 208 volts to ground. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else on high legs? Yes, Steve. Well, we talked about how this uh, 240 volt Delta system maybe used in industrial areas and so on, but there's also, you know, commercial applications 
uh, or small businesses where you may have a 120, 240-volt single-phase system and all your equipment is 240, your air handlers, your shop, whatever it is, and you grow and want to go to three-phase, then going to 208-volt system would cause you problems with that voltage. So that's another place where the uh, Delta Connect may come into play for an expansion of existing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, another thing is that uh, I don't think we're seeing many three-phase installations being installed, uh, but a high lake delta system was also used a lot when you had only one three-phase load. Years and years right. ago, you'd have single-phase 120-volt loads, and then you had one three-phase motor, which was the yeah. elevator. Then they would bring in two 500,000s and a six-gauge wire, and you'd have fusible disconnects, and you'd put 400-amp fuses, and you'd put like a 60-amp fuse on phase B, and that we used to then have what is called a delta breaker. That's where you had a single-phase panel, and you had a three-phase breaker, and that's prohibitive to be installed now, where you'd actually bring in one phase, which is the high leg, on the breaker, and then it went to the three-phase load, right. but then the two single phases traveled on that. So you might see some older installations with a delta high leg. You say, well, why are you covering something that's... Because, you know what? I'm sure there are thousands, if not millions of insulations, hundreds of thousands of insulations, and if you don't understand this and you get places only once or twice in your <laughs> career, you need to be able to take the voltmeter and always measure your volts, right? Line one, line two, line three, so you understand what the system voltage is going to be so that you can do a better job to make sure you do it a safe insulation.